What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today I wanted to do a quick video on a custom Glock that I made that I've been getting some questions about because I've been featuring it in some videos that I've done lately. So I just wanted to go over it, cover some of the parts that I put into it, cover why I put some of the parts into it, and to give you guys an idea of maybe a way you could build your own John Wick blaster for a little cheaper than what you can buy them for. Before I do that, I wanna mention my patron supporters. Thank you guys very much. I love you guys so much because you helped me buy guns and ammunition for the channel. YouTube just recently took all of my monetization away for the most part. Because of that, your support is more helpful than ever. So I really appreciate that. Because of that, we do a monthly giveaway for guns and gear related stuff. This month is going to be a K-Bar knife and an Ontario Rat 3 knife. So two of you are going to win this month and each of you are gonna get one of those knives. Also wanna mention ammo.com. They're a longtime supporter of the channel. I leave a link in the description below for 20 bucks off any order of 200 bucks or more. Also wanna mention Olight. I got an affiliate link with them now. So if you wanna save 10% on an Olight, all you gotta do is go down to the description and click the link. So what is this gun? Well, this was my Glock 34 Gen 5. And I would, I'd like to say it still is, but it's something a little bit different now. I have a lot of experience in my life customizing Glocks because I've liked Glocks a lot. I grew up shooting them. Back in the day when I started shooting, I'm not that old, but still, back in the day when I started shooting, there wasn't a whole lot of polymer guns on the market, so Glock was kind of king, and it kind of still is in a weird way. The problem with Glocks, however, is they have a lot of things about them that I don't really like that much, and... Uh, Luckily, you can change those things with aftermarket parts because Glock has the most aftermarket parts of, well, any gun for sure, maybe anything on the planet. It's hard to say. There's so many out there to choose from. So for at least the last 10 years, I have been upgrading and customizing my Glocks over and over and over and over again and selling them and buying new ones and selling them. Honestly, it's because I like the process. I like to try new and different things to see if I can get a little more performance out. And I'm kind of weird like that too. I like to try a couple of different accessories and put it on the timer and see if that improves it or see if it was a waste of money. What is this baller ass recoil control you had? <laughs> I'll show you. And uh, because of that, I can bring that information to you guys. Now, uh, maybe three or four months ago, I tried to create the ultimate Glock. And in a, in a way, I succeeded. And that was a Gen 4 Glock 34. And the reason why I like the 34 is because if you're gonna run iron sights, the 34 is gonna be the most accurate, besides the 17L, which is very hard to come by, because it has the longest sight radius. It has a Glock 17 sized grip with a slightly longer slide, giving you a long sight radius, and supposed to give you a little less muzzle flip. I think it's about the same as the 17. The downside to it, it is the heaviest Glock, not by much, because Glocks aren't very heavy, but uh, one way that you can fix that is you can do some slide milling. And if you slide mill a Glock 34, you'll end up getting about an ounce less than a 17. So you'll have a slightly lower weight gun with a faster cyclic rate that has a longer sight radius. So a tuned 34 for me just shoots better than any Glock I own. So that's why I've always stuck to them. This, Those two aren't the only ones I've owned. I've actually owned about five uh, tuned up Glock 34s in my life. So I have a pretty good idea of what I like. So when I went with the slide milling, which was, I knew was going to be the first thing, I wanted this, uh, I wanted this uh, spring cut here, and I really like that. So there's only a few companies that do that, and Jaegerworks is one of them. And Jaegerworks and Loki Tactical are probably my two favorite overall slide milling companies. Not because other ones do a bad job, but just because they tend to do the same job for a little bit less money. I mean, there's other companies out there like Terran Tactical who basically really blew up the Glock uh, aftermarket world and is very famous for the John Wick movies. There's Agency Arms, which is a real old G, and there's uh, Salient Arms, which is probably the OG of OGs. This is the Bearded Gunner, and I have a little bit of accessories here. This starts off at 250 if you don't want all the crazy stuff I got, but I had the top milled, I had it sh uh, shaved down, I had an RMR mount added for when I like to run a red dot. I don't like to run them all the time, but when I do, uh, I like to have the opportunity. As you can see here, the site that I chose covers up that mount a little bit. So if I ever do want to use a red dot, I have to knock that out, but I could choose a different site if I wanted, that wouldn't be an issue. So all in total, I think this slide cost me about 350, which is pretty impressive. I mean, it's got shit all over it, but it's pretty impressive considering I really like the way it looks. And it doesn't really change reliability all that much, if at all. I mean, slide milling doesn't 
it can if you get it done by uh, an amateur, but as far as Jaeger works goes, they've all been pretty excellent. I didn't change the barrel at all. I like the stock barrel. This The Gen 5s come with the Marksman barrel anyway. What are you doing, rabbit? Won't get. They're uh, not polygonal rifling barrel, whatever it is. And it's still very accurate, and I like the black on black. Basically, the only reason why I changed a Glock barrel at all, it would be to have threading on it to put a comp or put a, a suppressor on it, or if I wanted to change the color. And you can also take a standard barrel and send it to like uh, a bunch of different companies to get it tin coated and stuff as well if you wanted to go that route. Other than the slide milling, I changed the sights. I went with Dawson Precision because Dawson Precision has the best customer service of any company in the history of the world, uh, at least to me. I, I bother them all the time and they always give me everything I want. And uh, I went with a fiber optic uh, front with a black rear. It's my favorite sighting setup. It's the fastest for me personally. And I went with a very thin front sight to make me look cool on camera making those 100 yard shots because a thin front sight with a long sight radius makes it just that much easier to shoot accurately. Brave ass rabbit right there. Lucky you don't taste good. So I really like that. And people say that a thin front sight will slow you down. I personally haven't seen that, although I'm still in my 30s, so my eyes aren't quite as bad yet. But if your eyes are getting bad, maybe just go with a red dot because that really does help. The Gen 5 comes with the uh, ambidextrous uh, slide stop slide release there, so I don't have to worry about that. I made this gun look like shit because I do these uh, agency arms cuts and on this gun I certainly should have sent it in because I did this when I was tired and this is the worst looking one I've ever done. <laughs> this, uh, this one looks so bad. I decided to instead of just stippling this part and this part, I would stipple the inside to see how it looks and to me it just looks awful. And it's, a, it's like a shit stain on the Mona Lisa. I mean it looks really bad on this really good looking gun. But this gun wasn't built to look really good. So my ultimate Glock is I'll put a couple of videos in here we're gonna do another everything drill set this time with the ultimate glock without the light and i brought some extra ammo in case i run out and we'll see how this goes we're at 15 yards by the way was meant to be functional and to look really good. This is all function. So these slide cuts are all meant to lighten the weight of the slide, to lighten the overall weight so the gun doesn't get a little dippy towards the front because Glocks have a really light frame. And if you put that 34 slide on it, sometimes it can feel a little front heavy. And uh, you take the weight off that, it balances better. Not only that, but uh, it increases the cyclic rate, like I said before. So you can't outshoot a gun. Not even Jerry Michelet can outshoot the, the rate of the slide but it does help you a little bit when it's faster because it makes it feel faster. When it shoots down and it comes back, it's all about return to zero. So you gotta tune your recoil spring a little bit there and you can tune it to where it comes up and comes right back in the same place as opposed to kind of that riding recoil like some people do. So beyond the, the slide and uh, losing the weight, I actually did have them do the entire top. That, may, that way if I have them malfunction or I'm trying to rack the slide, no matter where I grab, I'm gonna have a ton of traction. So not only does it look cool, but it's super functional as well. And they don't do their slide cuts like a lot of people do where they're too sharp. These are just perfect. Now beyond that, I did another ugly thing that's super functional, is I did the Legion Precision Silicone Carbide. And I'm probably gonna do an individual video on this at some point, 
but I've had a lot of questions about this. All this is a sandpaper grip that doesn't come off. So I don't know what, what magic they use, but they spray this on here and it sticks on there forever. And I left the uh, large back strap on, as you can see, so they covered that guy up. And they go all the way up here, and I don't like that because I like to have a little bit of wiggle room in case when I come down on the draw in my holster and it's a little bit off, I like to slide my hand where my grip is perfect. Just, you know, you know, a centimeter here, centimeter there, whatever. And this is so grippy that if it's right there in the base of your hand, I had a hard time moving it around. So it's kind of messing up my draw a little bit. So they told me this stuff would never come off. Well... I don't know about that because I just took a screwdriver <laughs> or I think I don't remember I think I took a back of a knife and I just chipped it off and it took a long time uh, it, don't get this if you don't think you want this forever because this is pretty permanent yeah. sandpaper grip to me gives you more texture and it gives you a stronger firmer grip than any stippling I've ever had and the problem with sandpaper grips like talon grips is that eventually they'll start sliding and they'll fall off well, this is the best of both worlds, in my opinion, because it's the most aggressive grip that you can have, and it's not going anywhere. Even stippling will wear down after a while, and it will feel less aggressive. Whereas this stuff, I mean, I've had this for six months now, and I've shot uh, 2,000 rounds at least through it, and uh, nothing has moved other than the stuff that I chipped off myself. I went with a Hive magazine release because I, I want something functional for home defense and for defense if I need to, but I don't want a big ass uh, extended lever. Like I was running the, the ones from the Glock store, but they're so big that if you go rollover prone or something like that, they can hit the inside of your holster and it can eject your mag. Or uh, sometimes when you come up to do a really tight grip, you can put a little bit of pressure on it and it won't push it, but then when you fire the gun, it'll come in your hand and it'll eject that mag. Well, this Hive magazine release is big enough for me to reach without changing my grip at all because I got these long thumbs, which is really good. As you can see here, firing grip and it comes out no problem, but it's not big enough to impede anything else. So I like that it's around $50. Silicone uh, carbides around 175, slide works around uh, 350 total with all my accessories, but it starts out at 250 and the uh, Dawson sights, the pair of them I think is around 80 bucks. That was not always on, <laughs> but most of the time. And then I went to trigger, and I've got a lot of experience with Glock triggers, and my overall favorite, I like Johnny Glock triggers a lot, but I wanted something that looked a little bit different, was a flat face. So I went with Apex. I like Apex a ton. Now we're going down to the bottom here. This is gonna be a Dawson Ice Magwell. I like these a lot. Uh, this one I had to mold with a gun a little bit because Glock always leaves this shit at the bottom of the Magwell here that I had to kind of mess with. Also the Gen 5s, this is an old Gen 5, so it's got this cutout right here that I don't love and I can get magazines stuck on that. That was the dumbest thing Glock's ever done, that front cut, I hate that damn thing. But other than that, the Magwell increases uh, magazine reloads quite a bit, and it does help balance the gun out a little bit more with a little bit of weight towards the bottom, which is really nice, and also it balances kind of the recoil impulse also because it keeps the gun steady a little bit more. So I like that a lot. And then I did my incredibly, horribly ugly uh, undercut because this is honestly a gun that I didn't want to spend a huge amount of money on. And that's what I was getting to, this is more of a budget Budget John Wick build, so to speak. Because ever since John Wick came out, I've been in love with these 34s. I love the way they look. They look super cool. And sometimes you can buy guns that are functional that still look really cool. 
And with my ultimate Glock, I went too crazy. I spent like $2,500 on it, and uh, I didn't feel like I got $2,500 worth of functionality. So with this build, I wanted to try to find something that I could kind of do a middle of the road build. Do a lot of it myself, save some money here and there, and get what I want functionally, although I know it's not going to look as good, but not a big deal. So overall, I think I spent around $700 over the price, maybe $800, $800 over the price of the Glock. So price of the Glock 34, 550, 600 bucks, and then add 800 bucks to it, you're looking at $1,400. So this is not a cheap gun by any means, but if you compare this to a Glock 34 Combat Master from John Wick, uh, from Terran Tactical, I think they're starting out around 2,500. Uh, agency arms, you can get them around 1,700, sometimes 2,000. Salient can be oh, well over 2,000. So not only did I get absolutely every single part I wanted, minus the ugliness of my, uh, of my DIY project here, uh, it is the absolute perfect lock for me, and I'm super happy with it. And whether that'll last, I don't know. I'll end up building more guns and then compare it to this one. But so far, I'm absolutely in love. It shoots really quick, is really light, it's very reliable, and it's super accurate. What more can you ask? If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.